Hello, everyone. This is Derek Cameron. I'm a senior solutions engineer in the I team. And today I'm going to show you how to load data and process data from object storage into the ADB database. First, start by creating an auth token. Auth tokens are created in the cloud off the console. Let's, uh, let's go there. If we go here, we go here, we go to identity and security, go to users. Um, I'll go down to my user. I'm down at the bottom here, go into create an auth token. Auth tokens are giving permissions for the database to read object storage and they use your cloud user ID and they use what's called an auth token here. And you generate the token here, you create a generate token button and you just need to capture the password that gets presented. If you lose it, you'll have to generate a new token. No big deal, but yeah, I call mine API token. So that's what you need to do there. Let's go back to the steps, generate an auth token. Um, and then we do need a user ID. I typically don't do this in admin, create a new user, uh, grant them a role, create table, create view. You need direct grants because we're gonna be using stored procedures and stored procedures require permissions not granted through a role, but directly granted. So create table, create view, grant read, write on directory, data pump dir to demo, grant execute on DBMS cloud to demo. And then we just altered user demo so that they can we can store data in there, quote unlimited on data. So here's the simple create credential. Um, Every time I have a new cloud account, this is the very first thing I do because inevitably, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to usually use a credential. So that's your cloud user ID. Just pointing this out as well, if you are using a federated user, you do need to use the federated suffix in front of your username. And then that generate auth token password is there. Now to recreate what I'm going to do, you do need a local copy in your demo schema of the SH sales. Why is that? Well, you don't have permissions to updates and load sales and change data in sales. So I created a copy of sales, but I am using a few of the other tables as a sample. And I'll reference some of the other SH uh, tables uh, in, in SH, but for now copy and create a copy of the sales and then you're going to create a bucket. You do need to enable object versioning because the requirement was, yes, I want to delete it, but the customer said, but I might need to restore it if I have a problem. So when you delete it and you have object versioning, all those deletions are maintained in the background. Also, users are dumping new versions of their files. It'll just overwrite the old ones, but will back behind the scenes automatically version uh, version your file. So that's really useful. <clears throat> so you create the bucket and then you're going to upload the file new sales CSV into that bucket. That file is sitting in the Git repository where this, this is residing. So you can pick it up there, upload it. And very simple to do that, super fast. And then you need the URL. So let's go back online <clears throat> to the cloud account and take a look at that. So we're gonna access object storage through the storage menu, go up here to object storage. I have a bunch of buckets, but I'm using this daily input file. And I've uploaded this new sales.csv file there. I also uploaded a full sales CSV file. And the reason I did that, I just want to show you and demonstrate just how quickly external tables can dynamically read these CSV files. And in this case has 918,000 rows. We can read it in about two seconds. And then you can join this virtual C uh, table back to other Oracle tables and treat it just like a local normal table. And that's really super useful and helpful for being able to use the full power of SQL to do pretty much anything you want. Uh, obviously, you can't update it, but you can read it and load it and do other things. So let's take a look at that. So now let me go back to let's go back to the to the uh, to here. 
And so you do need to capture the URI. So let's go back into the cloud here. You go here, you go on the right, you go view object details. It's this URL up here, the URI URL path right there. You're gonna capture that. And you're really gonna use that full path up to the O and the slash in a lot of the substitution. So get a notepad out, copy it up to the O and do another copy in capturing the new sales.csv file. Those two URLs, the bucket URL that ends in O slash, and then the file URL, which is just adding the final file on it. We'll be pasting those. And you can see it actually shows you a little snippet of what the file looks like. So, so yeah, let's go back to the workshop here. Go down here. And now for kind of, I think the cool stuff is we can now read that bucket and list files in it and treat these files like a table with the object name. Let's take a look at that in SQL Developer. So yeah, select star from DBMS Cloud List Objects. Let's take a look at what's in there. So wow, we have files that when I uploaded, it shows the bytes, checks some, et cetera. And now we can create a PL SQL package that will read these and loop through each file and then for each file load and or update the new sales with the sales okay so that is really interesting i'll just show you how to do that drop the table create the external table new sales.ext select count star from new sales so let's do that execute dropped recreated Let's read that, how many rows in that? We have 22,000, almost 23,000 in that. It's reading a CSV file, remember, but behaving very much like a regular table. And how much have we got in the main table? We have 918,000, 919,000 rows fetched in two seconds. You know, if you're using functions or using rest calls and all of that, I mean, it's gonna take far, far longer. So um, the other interesting thing I wanted to show you is, oh, now that we have a virtual table, I mean, what, how, can, you know, how can we do analytics on it? This is a little bit of an aside, but this was a requirement of the customer to be able to track the running sum, the running average. And then they also wanted to use prior values. And this requires really a partitioned aggregate. Well, I'll try and write that in Python and be very complicated and extremely slow. So yeah, let's use SQL. And again, we're reading directly off the CSV file and we're joining it to the other SH files. How many rows in this? It's doing a join off a CSV file, reading that, joining it. And in about three seconds, coming back with a merged data set that you could might materialize and index and do all kinds of things with again. So DBMS cloud could be used to load data. There's a copy data function. To me, I don't know why, honestly, why you would do that when these external tables can be used as virtual tables and then you can do SQL on them. And of course you can load them and copy the data as well. Uh, the other interesting thing to know is these tables the files actually don't need to exist. They do not need to exist. You can create the table. It will only validate when will only validate when you actually query the table. So if, if files are coming and going, it doesn't invalidate your objects. So that's another interesting thing to know. So let's go back to the lab. We're going to query it. We created the external table. We've already done that. We've looked at it. We do, we do now create some other tables. It's just part of the case study, uh, an update log, a load log. We're gonna track the loads. I'm gonna track updates, old and new quantity, old and new amounts. This is very basic stuff for anybody who knows Oracle database. But again, I'm giving just a little bit of a um, peek into some of the things you can do with the database for those who are less familiar with it. So. I also want, they again, customer requirement, I need to track uh, changes. There's the trigger that does that. Uh, any changes, whether it's through Apex or any other application or even SQL Plus or SQL Developer will track these changes behind the scenes. 
I believe that's the best play to, place to capture those. We've got an after update trigger for each row, capture the old new quantity. And then we have a trigger that updates the, the, the last update date. So no matter how people update these records, they can't get around it. It's hardwired into the database to update the last update date using the sys date. So that's better than using application logic, which can't be relied on if people are using different tools. So then the other thing that I wanna show you is, well, all right, how do we load data? Super easy, we loop through files in the daily input files bucket and we put them, there it is there and I showed you how to query that. We drop the existing table and we recreate it with this dynamic URL that gets replaced on the fly. So we're using dynamic SQL. Dynamic SQL to drop the table. We're re rebuilding the table, looping file by file. We're also picking up the row counts. So what are we processing? How many rows? The customer wanted that for each file load. You um, insert into, uh, you select star from the new sales.ext. And then we drop the existing tail for the next file, right? So then I also have an update sales and it really mirrors the load, but if you wanted to do an update, here it is here. The other interesting thing that I learned, I was been lazy over the years, I've not been optimizing my PL SQL code. So I thought, well, I really need to do that. Instead of doing a cursor that goes row by row, I need to do batch fetching. And so I use a type, declare a type, sales T is table of new sales EXT row type. And then I loop through the files as we do up top. But then um, I then do a bulk collect into sales. And then for all, uh, thanks to Feuerstein who documented this for me. And so this is a great template for you, but it bulk processes it. It reduces the PL SQL to SQL context switching that have to occur otherwise on every row instead of all rows. Uh, so yeah, so there's the update table. And oh, lastly, I need a scheduled job that will periodically check uh, for files in the bucket. There's the create job there. This is just a sample. Sort of alert here, I have just, for the sake of testing this job, I set it every minute to, to fire. Now, if there's no files in the bucket, this takes like a millisecond to run. So you could set it to every five minutes, quite honestly. It really have almost no, um, you know, but we almost have no overhead, but this again is baked into the database. Don't need any other platforms, don't need any other, technologies or techniques, this can just take a look at it and it executes the stored procedure load, load sales. Um, and then I included this, I didn't implement it, but then people say, well, you know, I want to archive, I don't want to delete it, I want to archive it. So this is just a set of steps to be able to list the objects in daily bucket, copy the object to data pump directory, review the files in data pump directory, then copy the file to a new bucket, list the bucket, basically confirm it was copied over, delete the file in data pump, right? So you don't need all these steps. You, you just need to copy it from the source bucket to, to the file directory and then to the target. That's all you really need to do. And a lot of these are just confirmations. And then the analytics, is, I, as I said, um, I'll fix the format on that. That was just the analytic query that I showed you prior. So let's just look at a couple things and actually let's execute that load job just to show you how that works. So if I go in here, EXC load sales, super easy. Where are those sales? It's gonna take the sales, the new sales in the, uh, in the, virtual table, external table, and load it into the physical sales, right? It's gonna do an append. So let's uh, execute the load process and take a look at what that looks like. Now, remember I said that we loop through and pick up the files. It does not matter what the file name is, but remember that when we loaded files for the sake of showing you the analytics, I did load the full table in there. Don't wanna load that. 
These are sales up to December 31st, 2001. These are January 2002 sales. Let's delete this and we'll delete that. And then let's go back to SQL developer. And the other thing is, let's take a look at the load log. There's the load log data in it. I did a couple of test loads and there's the audit factoring the old and new amount. Every time I make changes or anybody, it's gonna log that. But let's take a look at the load log here. We've got five records, go back in here. Let's execute load sales. This should only take a few seconds. Right, it took 1.9 seconds to load 23,000 rows into the sales table. Let's take a look at that. Sales and data sort in descending order. There it is, which is the same data that's in the new sales, right? So, so that's just a quick introduction to the use of DBMS Cloud to read data out of object storage. Load it, delete it, move it, uh, do anything you want with it without having to use any other platforms. I, I hope you found this useful. Thank you.